Okay, now we're gonna look at how we get the um, MX-1 working as an audio interface for the MPC Live 2, which shouldn't really work because this isn't class compliant and this is only supposed to work with class compliant devices for audio over USB. But sometimes you try these things out and you're pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's pretty fantastic pairing. Um, before I get into what you can do with it, let's just get it set up uh, real quick because um, there's one thing you have to take care of on the MX-1 and that is you have to make sure your um, audio rate is set to match the MPC Lives which is um, uh, fixed at 44. So um, I'm just going to show you real quick, you turn it, turn it uh, the MX-1 off, hold gain turn it back on, hold gain, and then you hit, uh, I think it's BFX, yes, to go into the uh, sample rate menu. Oh, and you can see there's three settings. If you get some error message when you first try and do what we're about to do about audio rate, that's what you need to do to fix it. You leave, you set it to 44 and you leave it there as, as long as you want to uh, run this with the MPC Live. Um, now that's done, just press start stop button to save it okay so once you take care of the um, sample rate settings and you've uh, plugged in your MX1 via USB and you might have to do a restart and power the MPC back on to make sure it recognizes that there's a audio device plugged in. Now hopefully when we go to preferences, audio device, there we go. The MX-1 has appeared, we're gonna select that. And um, go to main. And now when we go to inputs and outputs on an audio track, all of these ins and outs are corresponding to the MX-1. And that includes um, the Roland IRA sort of US audio over USB channels, which run here, and all the regular channels which run here. And you just got to work out the numbering because the channels on the mixer go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then there are stereo pairs from there on seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that's what um, you can see on the inputs. Ignore the ones after that. Um, you can also select them in mono or stereo, which is great. Um, and outputs, um, the most useful thing here to know is that out 17, 18 uh, is actually this final, it's labeled PC, but we're kind of using the MPC Live instead of a PC here. We're using this as the computer or the brain, and this is the audio interface. So audio coming out of the MPC is routed back through here, which is a really nice way of controlling anything the MPC is doing. So as well as routing all the inputs into the MPC and being able to manage their sort of mixer um, and effects functions, using the MPC's internal uh, plugins, etc. Um, you can still run tracks, um, for instance, like, uh, you know, non-audio tracks. You can still load drum programs um, and have them play back through the mixer in combination with all the audio, the hardware you're running. So let's just do a quick example of that. Um, I'm going to get the um, SEO2 uh, just going to select a, slack, a patch ok good just going to start the sequencer running and um, ah sorry yep I forgot it synced to MIDI clock from the MPC live so actually need to press play on the MPC Live to get that SEO2 running. And now that's running, we should have signal 
the USB one channel. Um, and we can see they're lighting up nicely. And what we've got to do now is just check out uh, monitoring. Now we've um, just sorted the monitoring out with the patch by action. Um, yep, there's some pretty heavy bass coming from that SEO too. I mean, it's blowing my little Newman monitors, frankly. All right, so we've got a signal coming in from the SEO2 into USB one on the MX1, which is the equivalent of five, six, seven, eight, no, uh, stereo channels nine and 10. That's what that is coming into the um, MPC Live, which means we go into inputs and we hit inputs nine and 10. And then straight away you can see, I'm just gonna turn monitoring off because monitoring's being done with the signal as it tracks in through the MX1. We don't need to route it out of here back into the MX1. Um, and there you can see that. And we want to start recording. We hit the record button. And then I'm just playing back what we just recorded now. So the SEO2 input channel is muted and what we're listening to is the audio coming back from the um, MPC live on that PC channel. And that's brilliant because you've, you've now got with the MPC live two and the MX1 together, you've got a kind of audio routing hub here and you've got a MIDI control and um, kind of recorder here. So you can, I've just stopped that for now, but you can um, uh, get tracks recorded in to the um, MPC as audio. Or of course you could do the same thing we did, but just use, you know, uh, the sampler function, arm and record, let's just unmute the SEO2, start it playing again. Whoa. That's real loud. Well, one thing we should do is change the sampler's inputs to nine and 10 where we've got that audio coming in. Now you can see we're, we're monitoring and we can just hit the sample button and start recording that. And do all the normal things like slice it, etc., and then you um, let's just stop that again. Then you have a new um, sample to um, add to a program, assign to a pad, uh, save it into your regular sample folder if you want to, um, and then. Uh, keep it in the um, keep it in your project uh, go maybe go to um, different track sorry mini track and we have that um, we're not monitoring at the moment let's just switch to monitoring that output and turn the PC up now now we're hearing that sample playback. So the only real downside I can see of this setup, what you lose, obviously, like with any audio interface that you use connected over USB, the MPC Live 2, is you use, you lose the Akai MPC's own monitoring capability. It would be so nice if you could have um, a combi interface where you select 
the Akai as you're out and use, you know, you can still use that speaker because it starts with a really, really nice compact kind of sketch pad and jamming type of hub. But together, these two machines, and bearing in mind, I've only just discovered that this works with that. It was a total long shot. I really didn't expect it to work. It seems totally solid. It's working across all the channels. I've got so much um, uh, input versatility now in terms of audio just coming over a single uh, USB lead into the um, MPC Live. Now, I haven't like really fully road tested it to see, you know, if there's a point at which, for instance, running a lot of audio at the same time into and out of the MPC on that USB cable, if there's a point at which that's going to start running into problems and getting glitchy, could be. But I'm just really pleased that it, in principle, it works um, when it shouldn't really.